now join the Ritual Misery podcast in progress. Hashtag still in beta. But yeah, it's one thing that I think is interesting though is that there's because it's so 80s pop culture focused, there's a ton of references to Spielberg movies, of course. Well, they're making a movie of this. I think it comes out in 2018, and Spielberg's directing it. But he said he's taking out all of the Spielberg references. So it's like, really? Like, what? I mean, I get not wanting to be egotistical and stuff, but really? Like, you can't take your own references out. Yeah, so, I don't know. But it's a super cool book. All right, so no, definitely. Hey, hey, do they have that on Audible? Probably. Yeah, let me. I'll, I'll have to look that up on Audible. Yeah, it's yeah. Check I it gave out. up reading. I've gone to listening. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that, that, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. <clears throat> so uh, we uh, we we have some of these to talk about this week. Hi, uh, Blaze Aguera y Arcas. How's that? Uh, how computers are learning to be creative. Cabo, go. Wait, hold on. Purposely... Wait, hold on. First, I need Cabo to tell us again what the name of the speaker is. Oh, the, oh, the speaker? Yeah, no, Amos did a good job. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't hear him. His audio cut out. I need you to, to tell me. No, no, no. I mean, he did a really good job. <laughs> Um, but I mean, if I had to say it, if I, if it was me saying it, Blias Adio y Acaras. Yeah, that's what I would go with. Yeah, that that sounds like our our standard TED Talk speaker. Okay, I, I believe that's how he was introduced, just like that. I mean, they the same voice and everything. <laughs> no, I mean, I so like this TED Talk. Okay, so not gonna lie, when I looked for my TED Talk, um, I was purposely looking for a name that Amos was gonna have a hard time pronouncing, like. <laughs> But it was also basing it off what would be interesting still. And like so after I watched this, I mean, it was really cool to, to watch that. So they're kind of what I got from that. They're talking about how computers are being, well, basically can start thinking on their own. Like you give the probability, you, you would typically go um, X, X minus Y equals Z. However, in this in, in this scenario, what they're doing is they're already giving you Z and they're giving you Y, but the computer is doing the probable to figure out X. And it does all, it runs through so many different variations to get close to it. So if typically you would say that one plus one equals two, the computer during the, the prob, during its uh, computation would, would get close enough to go one plus point nine nine seven was close enough that it would go with that probability and it would create these images and so they started using it to create images and whatnot and oh my gosh the artwork that was being done i mean i swear like if i was like maybe six beers in or living in colorado and watching that i would be blown away like it would just it was playing through it was doing like so it was doing a scenario where it took an image and the computer was using that information that it was giving to say, you know what, maybe there was also this information. And it would like kind of go into another image and it just blended all so Yeah, and what like. I thought was because I, I watched this this talk too, and I thought it was interesting that he said basically that what you just said, if you were blazing it up or whatever, he said the first time that he showed that video was at a conference, uh, what was it called? Um, High on Life or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was. I think he said Colorado, right? Like the he week, did say Colorado. Yeah, it was the week after they legalized marijuana when he. Yeah, and everyone was blown away by it. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was the best way to to see that. But so he was also talking about the fact that this doesn't just go into the fact of that. Yeah, you can use this to create art and anything like that. But it is really for computers to create their own intelligence for. Skynet to actually happen, yeah. Because if the computer can start putting together this and already knows that, and it just has to figure out the in between portion, 
it can start doing this probability and get close enough to the answer to create well an action. Well, and here's the thing: the I think the the most practical use of the technology right now is the computer's ability to identify photographs, mm -hmm. which up to this point, <clears throat> excuse me, up to this point has been very very difficult for computers to do because yeah. it's just a bunch of pixels that to a computer just seems random, uh, but basically taught computers how to think like people uh, the and same to recognize a bird to recognize a person exactly to recognize any like whatever if, if, if you put you if you put an image in front of it and you said computer it, it would go that's a phone you don't have to tell it it's a phone it just knows this is a phone mm -hmm. and it could create the image based off of that the way the brain would work like how your brain reacts and you, you just know that's a phone. Mm -hmm. That's I, I, yeah. It was basically going into really how the brain works and how the brain processes the information to say that's what that is right there. Yep, yep. Super interesting talk. Uh, the the guy and and you pointed this out um, offline. You you said that uh, the guy is not the best public speaker. Yeah, I would. I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. Uh, he was kind of the boring teacher. I think. Yeah. Yep. But not because his content was boring, because the talk was super fascinating. But he just kind of talked like this. I mean, it wasn't quite Bueller. Bueller. It wasn't quite <laughs> that, But it was like, it was getting close to that. Yeah, because the way they had the podium set up and the, the computer set up for him, and the way for him to, to talk, he just stood there and just like, he, he did a good job of, of telling the information, but it felt like he was reading it from a PowerPoint almost like. Yeah. But he definitely was not reading from a PowerPoint. True. Yeah. But it was just like so, so scripted and the way he, he did not ad lib any of it. It was just all very scripted and it was true. Yeah. It was hard to listen to him, but like Practice. to catch up the information and see it, it was amazing. It really was. Yep. The true story. So, yeah. yeah so the, the one, so that, so your TED talk though, I thought that one was actually pretty interesting. So you, all right. So you watched the Amos. Did you watch the the talk that I put in here? So this talk was by Peter Whalen, um, and it it was aired on TED way back in 2023. Oh wait, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, so this was a TED talk from the future. <laughs> So what this was, this was actually part of a viral marketing campaign for the movie Prometheus. Have you guys seen Prometheus? Yes, saw that movie. Yep. I, I liked it. Yeah, definitely saw that. And the okay, so the movie the movie's a prequel to Alien, where Ridley Scott said that it's definitely not a prequel to Alien, but it is very much a prequel to Alien. Um, but what what's super interesting to me about this movie in particular is not necessarily the format of the movie and the storyline of the movie, but the backstory of the movie. Like, how did we get here? And, you know, what, what is not being shown on screen was more interesting to me than what we actually saw on the screen. Mm -hmm. And they did a super amazing job of the, the marketing campaign, the viral marketing campaign. They created a website for Wayland Industries. They had... Guy Pierce, who plays, um, you know, the old man, Mr. Wayland, they they made a TED talk in conjunction with TED, the actual TED conference. They made a TED talk as they envision it to be in the future, in 2023. It, but the the TED talk itself is about uh, Wayland, his his vision for humanity and how he wants to push the boundaries of what humans can do and what we can create. And, you know, we're, we're creating artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. And the main sticking point was that he said, we are the gods now. Mm. Uh, he starts to talk with, you know, how uh, Prometheus gave us fire and he got punished by the other gods and blah, 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 whatever. And then he goes through the through like a timeline of like the great technological advances throughout our history. And then he gets to like the, the AI part and, everything, and, he, and he said, you know, we're the gods now. And that was kind of a lead in to saying that, that, you know, come with me on this journey as I 
I push the boundaries of what we can do. There's no limit, and I'm going to take us there, basically. And in storyline, this was the like jumping off point for Wayland Industries to become the largest company that Earth has ever seen, which eventually merges with like the second largest company, Yutani, a Japanese company, to form Wayland Yutani, which is the the company in the Alien franchise. Um, so I don't know. It was super, super duper interesting. Uh, the link is going to be in the show notes. The link. I think the version of the link that I put in there is the the one from the Wayland Industries website. Yeah, the WaylandIndustries.com. Yeah, like yeah. super amazing. There's a there's a commercial in there for the David uh, like cyborg uh, robot thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like you you can look at like, stock. Like, like it has that futuristic set like that futuristic set to it. Yeah, and it's just yeah. so cool. It, it fulfills like, the, or it, it just like, it fills up the backstory for for this movie and the, just the franchise in general. And it's just, you know, I love stuff like that. So when when I saw this and I was looking for mine, there was another. Oh man, I should have I should have saved it. And I, you know, I don't even remember what it was now, but it was a TED talk from two thousand three, I think it was, mm. and it was talking about the the internet and where the internet was going to or uh, something about uh, something along that lines and i kind of kind of watched it a little bit and i was like wow that's amazing like this dude called it like this dude in his ted talk called what is going on now but i just oh man i i, I cannot remember the title of that TED thing or who it was because i just i lost interest in it because of the fact that it was a name that was easily pronounced oh. and now i, I cannot <laughs> recall the name yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That, no, that but this has always fascinated me. Vi viral movie yeah. marketing campaigns have always fascinated me. I think the first one that that I remember was uh, the Blair Witch Project. I don't know if you guys remember that. This was way back in like late '90s, early 2000s. It's like the year leading up to the release of Blair Witch, 98? and they made it. They made like they had a website that was talking about this found footage. They didn't reference it as a movie at all. They just referenced at, you know, like this is, this is, you know, unprecedented. We found, you know, the, these missing teenage kids, we, uh, they've been missing for all this time or whatever. And then we, we find this video camera. That's, that's like the last, this is like the, the last moments of their lives or whatever. And it's like super freaky and, you know, we're going to release it. And all of this stuff, you know, it made you like believe in their world, you know, like mm -hmm. you can see one about the Blair Witch Project, but their marketing campaign was, was brilliant. Yeah. Was absolutely awesome. And Prometheus did the same kind of thing, just kind of took it like, you know, five level levels further. Um, did you watch, um, did you ever see any of the extra, extra scene, scene stuff for the Martian? Thing? I'm sorry for the what? <laughs> For the Martians? Oh. Yeah, sound we heard. What did you just do? <laughs> it was not me. Can you hear me now? Nope. Shit. How about now? Can you yes. hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay. So, so did you ever watch all those extra scenes and stuff about uh, what the, the? So before the the movie The Martian came out, um, I thought, oh man, they were doing a great job with some of the uh, extra scenes that they were doing. They were building the movie up, so they were showing the the backstory on each one of the astronauts that was in the movie, and, oh. it, it, and it was doing a real like backstory for each one of them. That's so if awesome. you if you watched it. You were like, oh wow, like you were following that astronaut's life. Yeah. And then when you when the movie came out, it was straight into the movie. And you were just like, Oh, I already know about these people. I know who that is. I know who that. Oh, I, I get their story. Yeah. Oh, it, it was amazing to watch that and then go to watch the movie. I think it was a great marketing aspect. I mean, I know it's not really like no, not like what this is. No, but that's fantastic. I love that kind of stuff. But that was great marketing. Yeah, that's 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 fantastic. 
Yeah, I don't know what happened to the, to the sound again. Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think we have gremlins. The bad yeah. guy. Yeah, these, yeah there's the, they're those beta gremlins. <laughs> We've got the beta gremlins. Yeah, you get them beta gremlins, man. Damn beta. Or, or actually, it might be the alpha gremlins. <laughs> Look, hey, hey, what did they say? You do not feed them after after midnight. Yeah, it's well, midnight my time. It's, been, uh, it's after midnight my time. It, that's what happened. That's what yeah. happened. It's not midnight for either one of us yet. You don't feed the mogwas after midnight. Is it mogwas? Mogwise. Yeah, mogwise. Mogwise. Mogwai. Mogwai. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holy crap. Beta gremlins. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely beta gremlins. <laughs> so, hey, Amos, should we should we go with some of the feedback that we got this week? Uh, yeah, if you can hear me, we can do it. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, all right, we got it. We got a couple different pieces of feedback this week. Uh, what, I want to I want to read portions of an email that we got. Um, this is from Mark. He says, "I just wanted to touch base with both of you and let you know that I am joining the podcast. Keep up the good work, Mark J." Um, sorry, Mark. I think we're letting you down this week, um, <laughs> but definitely we appreciate your email. Um, there was a, there was actually quite a bit more to the email, um, and I absolutely appreciated every word of it. Uh, most of it was not meant for the audience, though. So, so why uh, are you mentioning it? I'm just, just saying. Be, um, just because I'm trying to fill uh, time. Did, did it get very? Did it become very intimate? Yeah. It was intimate. No. It, 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 it was not intimate uh, uh, necessarily, but I, I I could see how one could read it that way. You know. I mean, you know. Mm, mm. Who are we to judge? Good job, Mark. <laughs> no, thanks, thanks, Mark. Love the feedback. Mark, Mark, uh, uh, you know what? One of a few new patrons we got this week, actually. I'm if sorry. anything, I think you've only secured Mark as a patron um, by having these issues still. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's our. It's kind of like like when I when I watch the Gizwiz and I watch uh, Chad and Dick and they have all their issues and they're like, yeah, you know, sinister crappiest videos and all that. This is um, I mean, uh, it's. <laughs> this is your guys' thing. Oh, jeez. If you guys ever have an episode, I swear to God, if you ever have an episode with no issues, I'm done watching. Because <laughs> you left beta. Then, then there's no more beta. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to start new shows. Like We can't even do shows together anymore at that point. It's just like, yeah. all right, yeah. man, it was nice knowing you. Um, yeah. Good luck in your podcasting career. <laughs> I, I know we've been friends since since we're kids, but uh, it's over. This is like, uh, hey, that uh, that show went off without a hitch. Uh, so what are we gonna do next? Oh, <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. I, I oh, thought the music was gonna play. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, so one more hand. Um, we we do we did get a voicemail this week, so let's uh, let's see if we can actually get this to work. All right, am I playing it or are you gonna play it? I, I I might have it. Let me let me try it here. Hey, my, you give it a try. My high high class system right here. Uh, okay, so uh, so the recording's a little garbled. Uh, that's not that was an artifact. That's actually how it came through to us, um, mm. which is amazing because even as garbled as it was, Google Translate uh, or Google uh, uh, dictation was p like perfect on it. Um, essentially, the listener wants to know uh, what we feel about the rumors that there may be a serial live action Star Wars. Uh, uh, program, yeah, TV uh, show. show. Yeah, yeah, essentially a live action TV show, like not the uh, not not animated, whatever else. And uh, what, what are you guys' thoughts on that? I think it's fantastic, and the 
But George Lucas mentioned this like probably a decade ago that he wanted to do this. Never got around to doing it, obviously. He sold it off to Disney. Now Disney has Mickey Mouse money and can do whatever the hell they damn well please. And I, I think it's fantastic. I, I hope that if they do this, they put the same care and attention into it that they do with the movies. They don't try to water it down and, you know, be something that's, you know, more mainstream more whatever just make it star wars just put the same love into the show that that you guys do with the movies and i think it'll be great chris um definitely 100 percent agree with kent on all of that um i also what i hope is that they don't try to take it down a different storyline um so like uh I, I like like star wars rebels I love Star Wars Rebels. Uh, I don't. I don't care cartoon or not. I love it. I love it too. Yep. I think it does. A, I think it does a really good job of uh, kind of keeping with the storyline and not going too far off of it. If you do this, I'm just. I'm curious about at what point does it come in at though. So my thoughts on it. I I kind of feel a little bit differently. I want to stay completely away from the normal, like the 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 cinematic storyline and mm -hmm. in, in the same vein as on in the Dragonlance novels you have the chronicles the first three books and you have the legends same essential characters and it just continues on with the same characters um and that that's the main story but then there's only like 20 books involved in the main storyline there are like 150 total books in Dragonlance there's so many other stories to tell there's so much other information to have and some of them are linked in. Some of those other stories have an effect on the original story, the original, uh, the main, the main, the trunk of the, of the, of the, the story, if you will. But I don't want it to be something that's so involved with it that either I have to watch the TV show, like Marvel's doing, like you, to get the full scope of everything, you have to watch the TV show. I just want it to be something that adds in, but doesn't, uh, doesn't directly affect. But see, but that's what I'm saying. Like, at what point does it come in at, though? Because it would, is it coming in after the? Is it coming in after the Luke? I guess the, the Luke saga and the new, the well, new guess, stuff. One of the ideas that George Lucas had floated was doing a show kind of focused on bounty hunters and like the fringe character, like bounty hunters, smugglers people like that and i think his idea was to have it take place like, during the galactic civil war so the original trilogy timeline but it'd be the same it was kind of like what amos is saying where you know you might have a cameo once in a while of of a character that's you know from the movies or whatever you might see darth vader once for two seconds in the background or something like that but it's not about you know it's not a jedi specific story it's not a skywalker story it's a, you know, these fringe characters living in this universe, the, the Star Wars universe. And I would, me, for me, I, that would be the tits, man. I love uh, the fringe type stuff. Like, I, I, I think I really, yeah. I really have to go with, uh, with uh, Jenny Joseph, Josephson on this one, though. Um, and she said two words, Mara Jade. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. See, I loved Mara Jade as a character, but I don't know how she fits in with... And you know how you can find out? This TV show! <laughs> exactly! Yes, okay. I'll, yeah, I'm yeah. Down, down with a Mara Jade TV show. That would be great. I don't know. Like, For, for me, I just want to know at what point that they're going to be... I still want to know what point would they be in with this at. I think that's what's going to matter the most to me. I, I think it'd make most sense to be after episode uh, after episode six, because you've already got yeah. so much, one one to three is there. Then you got the the um, the the the. I would love. I would love it if it if it started after episode six. Yeah. I would love this one hundred percent. I would love it. I, I think that's the logical place to put it. Is between episode six and seven. Because between and six and seven is when you have all that no Jedi's. 
Right, right. Yep. Well, I, I don't want to say no Jedis. You have Luke. You know, you know, take that back. No, no. Take that back. I'm sorry. Between six and seven, you have him trying to rebuild the Jedis. Right, but, but not, not immediately. You're and, right. And even when he was trying to rebuild it, it was, it was very small and it was contained. Yep. At least for, the, for a yeah. while. I mean, I, but I, but I, I do think after episode six would be a great starting point for this. And I would be 100% on board. 100% on board. I'd be with that. With that. 20 years of solid time between six and seven. It's, it's a perfect gap for the timeline. But again, I don't think you get Luke and Leia and Han. And I don't think you have the main, main characters in there. There's so many other characters just outside of that main, uh, the, the main path of the story that can tell right. amazing stories and still fill in that gap but not be the people in the gap. You know? Mm -hmm. I, right. I, don't, I don't need to know what Luke did in that gap, but to know what other people who interacted with or were uh, associated with Luke, what they did during that time, that'd be amazing. I, I'd like it if it stuck along the storyline of, okay, the, the Empire has been struck down, and now where are we? And where are we going? Because, I mean, the Empire was huge. The Empire was, had a huge impact all the way up, up through that the episode six. And then now the uh, Emperor is gone. So what happened? Like, was, did it fall apart? Was there a lot of battling between whoever? Did yeah. that increase a lot of the... Well, the, um, that, the, no the novels are addressing a lot of these issues. As well. The, well, yeah. So, like, but and that's like, and that's like Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Rebels. There's a lot of the novels uh, in front of that part that I think is still why I like Star Wars Rebels. I like their take on it and their explanation between what happened before, like before Episode One, um, or episode. Well, it's between three and four. Yeah, I'm sorry, three and four. Between three and four. I'm sorry, not episodes. Yeah. I get confused on my my saga. <laughs> what if you went uh, because three came or four came out? Yeah. Right. What, yeah. what if you went way pre one, way pre one? Oh, so what if we went way, way pre one? Yeah. Old type stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Like Ooh. down with that too. What what if, what if we went like so far back? It was the the original origin of the Jedi Order. Mm. Oh my God! Okay, so now you're talking like oh man, like twenty thousand years or some shit. Right, but you're not talking about you're not talking about universe. You're talking about like systems as opposed to galaxies. You know? Yeah, true, true. And and go back to that time frame. Like you know, who was the actual first? No shit. Hey, I'm a Jedi. I'm building an order. These are the trials and tribulations of actually getting people that are worthy of it. You know. It'd be like starting a martial art, I think. Like, what was the origin of karate? Do you want to go that far forward, or just far enough forward it would lead into the story for episode one? No, no, no. I, that's just it. I want to leave the story for episode one and all that shit. I, I want to leave that for the movies. I think that's where you get the anthology, the Rogue One, and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. The main movies, I think that's the meat and potatoes of that right there. But Completely stay away from that, but just go somewhere else. But 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 yeah, but as far it, it's still in the same vein and and still the same environment, the same the same characters and uh, and the, well the character types and and stuff like that. But don't don't mess with the main story. There's so much more out there. There's so much more history. So many other stories that lead into it, uh, like like the roots of a, of a tree without being the trunk of it, you know, uh, things mm. that really feed into the main storyline without actually being the main storyline and i just think there's so much material there i would love to see some of that back history like when you're reading dragonlance novels and you read the, the 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 dwarven nations trilogy you know there's stuff that you never even would have thought of and you can see how it affects the main part of the story but it's not the main story and i think that's where they, sh where they should go with it if, if, if they're going to do it at all which i'm not necessarily fully not necessarily do i, I do i think that they're going to do it i mean there's just because you got the same company that owns ABC and uh, and Star Wars, that doesn't mean that there's going to be an effective mashup or that they'll execute it properly. Um, True. But if they want to attempt, mm -hmm. I think they. I think the further back you go, 
you know, make it a fucking Jedi origin story and make it a, a four seasons, five seasons. And, you know, it, it, it could be like a, the, the, what is it, American Horror House or American House of Horror or whatever. Uh, American where, Horror Story. Where, where it's, American it's, Horror it's, Show? Yeah, a horror story. Horror yeah. story. It, it's, it's every a, season is a completely different storyline. Right, but it's, it's got a lot yeah. of the same themes in it. You know, make it to where the first season is no shit, the original, the origin of the fucking Jedi. Next season, you, you're going back, and, and now you've got the, the Sith and the Jedi, their first major confrontation, and make it a, a 15 episode set about that. And then the next season comes in, and you're looking at the Jedi Order as, a, uh, as an actual organization being formed. And then you can go forward from there. And you can, really, you can even bounce around different time frames, whatever else. And now you don't have to have these big name actors or anything else involved. You can keep the, the budget low, keep the effects practical, and tell an effective story that leads into the, uh, the, whole, the overall whole without being the overall whole. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Uh, one thing that I don't want it to be, though, like I, I'm cool with it being Game of Thrones. I don't want it to be Xena Warrior Princess. You know what I mean? Like that campy, super low budget, kind of almost borderline ridiculous visuals. You know what I mean? Right. Like right. keep it. I'm all for keeping it practical, but like let's be pros about this, not backyard special effects. You know. But but again, if the the short, the smaller you keep the scope of the story that you're telling, the easier it is to to maintain a reasonable budget on these things. You know, one of the reasons that G Game of Thrones is, is so expensive and so blown out is because it's so grandiose in scale. It's a sure. huge yeah. story. And there's a right. lot of so big things going on. If you were, like, American, uh, American Horror Story, it's a very, like, they had, what, four sets? You know, and it told a, an amazing, effective story that was engaging and really moved on. I mean, I'm not saying you have to stick to four sets, but you can you play it on a smaller scale. Absolutely, and I think they can pull it off. When I say, like, uh, you know, keep it like Game of Thrones, I mean, like, the attention to detail and the um, emphasis on the importance of the story and the acting and things like that. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be nearly the scope. In fact, it probably shouldn't be the scope of Game of Thrones because now you're looking at the scope of the movies. And we want to like just you know bring it in, focus on this you know core group or a core story, uh, or something like that. And it does not have to be portrayed as grandly as uh, you know like Game of Thrones or something. Right. So. All right. Very cool. I think uh, I think we finally got our audio figured out right at the end of the show. There, that's pretty amazing. Well, well just in time. I think um, I think Cabo might have one more story to tell. What what? I feel like I feel like Cabo has one more, one more story to tell. Oh, um, <laughs> man. Oh man, you guys are gonna have to kick me off the show, like straight <laughs> kick me off the show. I have no this bitch. What? No, I'm just <laughs> so like, okay. <laughs> so as I'm watching the last episode, right, and you guys are leading into. Uh, my this bitch stories. Um, yeah. I'm sitting here going, man, these guys are gonna hate me. I'm not gonna have any this bitch stories for them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, I, I have all kinds of stories, and I can I can relate pretty much almost anything to it. This bitch, like, <laughs> like you guys so eloquently put. Um, it doesn't have to. It, I, and when I say this bitch, I do not mean it as the female. Like, like I'm calling a female. Sure, sure. This bitch. It applies to anyone that is being a bitch. <laughs> Guys can be bitches. Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> Guys can be bitches just like women, just like whoever, right? So <laughs> I'm kind of torn on what this bitch story. I, I want to tell. I, I I really am. I'm I'm really torn. Um, man, I thought I was gonna have it like locked down by the time we got to this point, and I and I don't I don't. Ah, uh, Amos, this bitch. Am I right? 
Seriously. I'm, I, I think I'm this bitch. I think I am this bitch right now. <laughs> this bitch came on our show expecting to have a fucking great time and to be able to knock fucking jokes all over the place. And he comes in here. First of all, he's got all his goddamn teeth in his mouth, which is bullshit in the first place. <laughs> I this bitched myself. I I completely this bitched myself. You are the bitch. <laughs> how does how does this bitch how does this bitch this bitch himself? I don't know how that happens, but it happened. I this bitched myself. That's amazing. Well, you I, know what? So Cabo, this this is what you need to do for us. Then you need to come up with not just one now. You need to come up with three this bitch stories and you need to record them in in short story format, like five minutes or less, so that we can so, play the future so episode. Un, un, see, see and, and I and I have a special challenge for you because there there's there's this instinct to to refer to this bitch as being a bad thing. I want you to find a story where ironically it turns out good. Oh shit! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Okay, here, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> so, I left work early uh, one day. I don't remember. I don't recall what I left work early for. I really don't. Um, but I was heading home, and on the side of the road, I see um, two vehicles pulled off on the side of the road, hazards, hazards on, and all that. And I, you know, as I pass, I see. Uh, there was two uh, ladies standing outside the vehicle looking at a tire that, as I drove by, appeared to be flat. So I was like, you know, I did the the Good Samaritan thing, pulled over. Um, I backed up so I can go see what's going on, right? And I say, hey, you know, I'm in uniform. I'm, I'm still in uniform because I left work. I'm like, hey, you know, my name's Chris. I'm not trying to scare you or anything like that. I, I saw you standing over here. Do you need any help? And they were like, Yes, as you can see, my tire is pretty much flat by now. Um, I've called AAA, and I'm not, I'm not sure what to do because the last time AAA came out, it was a really creepy guy, and I, I did not feel safe with him changing my tire. And I was like, hey, no worries. I was like, uh, you know, you, you got a tire and all that. And she's like, yeah, I know. I was, she's like, you know, I, I called my husband, but, but he's sleeping right now. He's a mischief guy, and he just told me to call AAA again. And that, and that he wasn't going to come down. And I'm like, this bitch is not going to fucking come down and help his wife out, who's sitting on the side of the fucking road, and it's hot as shit out right now. What the hell is up with that? Because I'm, if I, I, I'm sure if, if Amos, if your wife or, or, or Kent, if Steph called you to say, hey, I'm stuck over here, and I have a flat tire, I need some help. Whether you had just gotten off work or not, Hey, I'll be right there. Where you at? I will Absolutely. be right there. It, Absolutely. It, it becomes a game at that point. It becomes a game of I need to get there to help before A, she figures it out on her own, or B, some random motherfucker walks along and wants to be helping my woman. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Like it, yep. it's, so, it's like a probably equal challenge. Part, equal parts. So as I'm, as I'm looking for where the spare tire is at and all that, she calls her husband and says, hey, there is a guy who stopped. Who's gonna help me? Who's gonna help change the tire and all that? And I'm and I'm thinking to myself, no, I'm not changing this tire. No, that's not gonna happen. So she hangs up, and I say, hey, have you ever changed a tire before at all? And she's like, uh, no. And her friend is like, no, I've never changed a tire. I'm like, ladies, guess what? You're about to learn to change a tire right now. <laughs> So I get them. I help them out. I I, I walk them through the the explanation of you know making sure that you're that uh like what gear to leave your car in whenever you go to change a tire, break the lug nuts free, all that stuff. Jack placement, the importance of jack placements. Um, making sure you have a solid ground beneath that. I go through all of that, right? Like my military side of teaching a young airman how to change a tire on an aircraft. Brand new. Why you do something and and the the reason it is done that way. So we get through about three quarters of the tire being changed. And I look at the time. It is now 45 minutes has passed from the time I started this, this whole operation and we got to that point. So probably total from the time that she called her, her husband, it had to have been at least an hour. 
Ooh. From where we were parked to Crespi, where she told me she lived, it's only maybe a 30-minute drive. Yeah. If. <laughs> had, you know, had to be. So only. this bitch could have woke the fuck up and came the fuck down easily and helped his wife change a tire. Right? Yeah. By oh, your reasoning? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, not at all. Has not shown up. I'm expecting to see a car at any moment pull up and go... Hey, thanks for helping her out. I got it the rest of the way. No worries. That's what I'm expecting to see. Mm. Does not happen. We get all the way through, all the way through changing the tire. And I say, hey, you know, congrats. You know, you know how to change the tire. She's like, I can't believe I know how to change the tire, and my husband doesn't. Oh, what? Oh, this bitch. This bitch don't even know how to change a tire. That's why he says call AAA. This. Uh-oh. Oh, How the hell? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe that's me being I don't know what saying that that all guys should know how to change a tire, right? Well, wait, 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 hold on, real quick. Are you, you're a crew chief, right? Yeah. Well, that's kind of like that's your job, right? That's your whole. That's what you do. One hundred percent. But Marley, if Marley had a flat tire, I would be hard pressed not to get there before someone else showed up. Or before she figured it out herself, I would be hard pressed to get there before she did it herself, right? And and changed her own damn tire. Yes. I mean, it would be like, okay, uh, I'll be right down, babe. And they had to jump in and try to drive fast as shit because by the time I got there, it would probably already be changed. And I'm going, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't make it. I am so sorry. Yep. Yep. Because she would change her own her own oil tire. I mean, you name that stuff, she can she can do that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just blown away by this bitch would just lay in bed and sleep rather than get out of his out of his bed to help his wife that was on the side of the road just trying to get the fuck home. Yeah, and just just consider the safety factors. Like But hey is stranded on the side of the road. Like you better get your ass over there, dude. But the positive side of it, yo, his wife can call him out and punk his ass. All the time now, because she knows how to change a tire. Oh damn! One hundred percent. That's so. Amazing. So so and now it's time for me to add a, add a little flavor to this. You ready? Um, I just recently started like jump starting cars. My wife showed me how to jump start a car the right way. What were you doing wrong? Wait, hold on, hold on. I know what you were doing. He was connecting the red cable first. You were connecting the ground to the battery ground and not to a metal of the car and not to a ground on the car. Oh, God. No, 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 no. That's, that's related, though. So um, that's how she was doing it. I, I've actually corrected her on that. She doesn't do that it, that way anymore. So when I was like, uh, when I was like eight or ten, uh, one, of my, 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 one of my stepdad's friends was jumping a car. And when he went to go strike, you know, go well, not strike it, but when he went to go connect the the last uh, uh, clip on the jumper cables, mm-hmm. the fucking battery sparked, blew up, and blew acid everywhere. Jesus, like, you, you know that worst case scenario? It happened, and I was like eight feet away from him at the time. So from then until I was like thirty three, even being a fucking electrician, I was like, I'm not jumping a fucking car. Fuck you. You get the hell out of here with that shit. You know what I mean? And it and it took yeah. my wife being uh being uh Oh, so you was that bitch. I, I was. I was that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and until one day it was a matter of am I gonna let my wife jump her own car in the fucking rain or am I just gonna get out and goddamn do it? And I just got out and did it. And uh since then it's been okay. Uh-uh. For like a long time. Like every time somebody's jumping in a car, I was like you know, because this one thing happened at one time. Like, the, the one dude it's ever happened to, I saw it, you know? I was like, oh, fuck that. <laughs> so, okay, swear to God. Okay, so before before Marley, my the, the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me, came along, I used to use the laundromat all the time. I said, why do I need a washer and dryer when I can just go to the laundromat and get a good goddamn story every time I go? So one day I'm at the laundromat and it's raining and there's an older lady and uh, I, bl- her, I think it was her older daughter or whatever. They're trying to leave and the, the, she had to be that lady who parked right in front of the door of the laundromat 
in a spot that's not a spot. <laughs> but because it was raining, she parked there so that way she can get in and out really quick. Right. Okay, whatever. Unfortunately, her car died when she ran in. So I see her sitting out there and they, they're trying to do something and I, I stick my head out and I go, hey, you know, is everything all right? She's like, yeah, the car won't start. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, okay, well, let's take a look. And she's like, well, my husband does something with the battery a lot and uh, I think that's what I need to, I think I need to mess with the cable on there so I can start it. And I'm like, mother, I'm like, I'm looking up. I'm like, damn, I'm going to die. Like, <laughs> I'm going to die. It's raining and I got to mess with a battery cable while she's trying to start this. So I'm like, okay, no worries. I got this. I go to my truck and like any mechanic, yeah, I have gloves still in my truck most, pretty much all the time. So I grab the gloves that I have in my truck and I go out there and I, I grab the, I look at the battery terminal first and I see, you know how the, the, the positive cable is really like a, a pretty thick cable? Like if you, it's probably the size of like an average person's finger, minor short stubby one. So probably not this size, but of an average person's finger, it's about the same size, right? Um, it was frayed down to like maybe three strands. Oh shit! The rest of it just frayed, oh. and I'm like, oh my god, what? Uh, okay, so there's a problem here. And then she's like, yeah, I don't know what he does, but he kind of wiggles something over here, and it starts every time. And I look, and where the terminal plug is sticking, and then the, the terminal goes over that plug. Whoa, that's kind of a bad interpretation. <laughs> it, it, it sticks over that. Yeah, okay. There was a nail that was bent over in between that, and you have to maneuver that nail in between there to get the car to start. <laughs> Dude, spend the $12 and buy new cables. Jesus. That's what I said. Oh. I gave, so as I'm finishing this up and we get her car started, right? And I'm like, and I'm the whole time I'm terrified. I am freaking terrified that I'm going to die. Well, I'm trying to get this help her get this car started. As soon as it gets started, she's like, Oh, hey, sugar, thank you so much for helping. Blah, blah, blah. And goes to hand me a $20 bill, right? And I'm like, No, I do not need that $20 bill. You Please take use $20. that. Go to, go to AutoZone. Yes. Oh. And buy what you need with that $20. Oh, my God, man. It was like, Yeah, yeah. But a freaking nail in between all that. And that's how you got the car to start. You just kind of wiggle it. No, mm -mm. no. That, that's amazing. Yeah, Amos, you would have never touched it. No, 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 hell no. I, I, uh, I, uh, I know a certain individual used to use a screwdriver to uh to arc across his uh his starter. Hey, that was starter. The starter. battery. That was the starter. Did I ever tell you guys about me using the? Uh... I had a sixty-eight Impala. <laughs> hey, did I ever tell you guys about me in Germany using jumper cables on myself? On, on yourself? Oh, uh, maybe that's another time. Maybe I, or... I watched the video, but I haven't actually heard the narrative. So, uh, so once again, yeah. So, um, <laughs> we were in Germany when when I was stationed in Germany. Uh, I was I was pretty young and dumb. Still, now I'm just old and dumb. Yeah. But back then, <laughs> young and dumb, we go we go to this concert in Germany. It's it's called Rock and Ring. It's a three day concert of just all kinds of bands coming in and playing. Great. Great concert. Well, before that, we went to camp. You can you can start camping about two days before the, the concert starts. So meet a bunch of my buddies, a bunch of guys from work. We all go. We find a camping spot. We, my buddy and, and I, in his car, we take 25 cases of Fosters, right? That's what we take. There's another car that goes with just strictly Jaeger, another car that goes with just, I mean, it's just so much alcohol that we took down there. By the third day of just nonstop drinking, we're all sitting around. It's kind of raining out. Uh, we got cars pulled wherever. One guy has a, a a car horn set that plays Dixie hooked up to the car battery. So we can always just hook it up and wake everyone up that's camping around us and just keep playing like the, the Dixie song. And uh, we're sitting there. It's early in the morning. I'm not wearing any shirt. I have my nipples pierced. That's key to the story. And a buddy is recording. I I, I swear to God, I, 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 I'm trying to find this video still. But he's sitting there recording it. And as we watch the video, all you hear me say is, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I ain't scared. I'll do it. 
And there's nothing being said. No one's saying anything. We're sitting around just drinking. It's like seven in the morning. And they're all like, what? What are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, I ain't fucking scared. I'll do it. I'll do it right fucking now. And they're like, what? So I get up, barefoot, walk over to the car where the horn set is at, standing in wet grass. And I grab the horn set and I hook the one motor end up to one, one nipple. I take the wire for the other side that would go to the terminal to make it play, and I hook it to the other ring. Holy shit. So interesting fact interesting fact about electricity. It will take the the least path of resistance every time. Unfortunately, that's through my body. <laughs> At this moment in time, it's through my body right through here this area right and i cannot get the horns to play and i'm getting pissed i can do this i can do it. i swear to god i can do it this is all and you hear everyone on the video go what the fuck is he doing are you stop it dude i'm like no i got this you kept trying so i tried three or four times and i cannot get oh the horns god. to play so a buddy of mine this comes bitch. In, right and my buddy who only has one nipple pierced. He doesn't have both. He only had one. It was a hoop, by the way. This is key. He had a hoop. And he takes it. He's like, let me see. So he hooks it up to his one nipple ring. But the horns start going. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm even more pissed now. Now I'm even more mad. I'm like, I can make the horns play. But I figure it out when I grab it. I should only go through one nipple ring. So this way, it's not going through my body. I have horseshoes. I don't have a full hoop. God damn. So with my horseshoes, it still has to go through my body. My nipple, more in particular, is what it has to go through. So as I'm getting the horse to play, my nipple is burning. Like flesh, the burnt smell of flesh is happening. Jeez. And I'm like, I got it. Oh, I got it. And I finally stopped. <laughs> so you would think the story stops there. No. Oh my God. We start, everyone else that's partying there with us, everyone's like, hey, who's got piercings? Who's got piercings? One guy says, I have my eyebrows pierced. We talk him into doing his eyebrows, one in each side. Each side. But electricity, car battery through his here. Idiot. Does it live? No problem, right? <gasps> then a guy says, I have a Prince Albert. Oh no! The only time in my life that I'm willing to look at a man's penis, other than when watching porn, obviously, is at this moment right now. And I'm like, dude, I, I swear to God, you got, you got to do this right now. I will give you $100. We have $500 out on a table for him to just hook it up. I'm, I'm sorry. He doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. But a girl with her hood pierce comes and does it. No freaking problem. She's she just walks up. Some German chick out of nowhere just walks up and says, "Okay, yeah." This German just like says whatever, drops her stuff and just hooks the the horns up. And we were like, "Oh my god, that did not just freaking happen, right?" Amazing stuff. And then someone says, "Hey, what's it like if you start the car?" I don't know. What's it like if you start the car, <laughs> gentlemen? Let me tell you right now. So with the car not started, it basically just goes through the car battery. But when you start the car, you got a lot more amperage going through there. Needless to say, it welded to my nipple ring, and they had to rip it off Holy to make it, stop uh, make it stop electrocuting me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so car batteries and jumper cables, maybe not so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I've done some dumb stuff, really dumb stuff. Wow. Okay, you, you're coming back for a third, a third appearance. That, that's gonna happen. You're that guy. I was this bitch. I was. This... Yeah. <laughs> Their friends were going, man. This bitch was hooking up car, hooking up a freaking cables to his fucking nipple rings. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. Holy hell. Well, yeah. So you you need to come back, dude. Um, not next week because next week we might have the one and only Tay Allen 
returning to the Ritual Misery podcast. Oh, awesome. Me, right? That's not confirmed yet? That is not yet confirmed. Uh, I'm confirming uh, it. It's still a, waiting it'll, for it'll confirmation, be, but it'll be it'll be Friday. <laughs> yeah, it will be, yes, it will be the final Friday of yep. Ritual Mystery. Yep. Um, we, Ooh. Which which leads right into the next announcement is that after next Friday, Ritual Misery is moving to a new time slot on Wednesdays. That'll be the was it the twenty? Yes, same same time for now. Um, the 24th, I think, right? Uh, I don't know what you're asking me. It's like calendar. Yes, the, the 24th will be our, our first Wednesday show. So that'll happen. Yeah, it's the 24th. No. Yep. What was that, Chris? Yeah, it's the 24th. I just looked. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, 24th will be moving to Wednesday nights. Hopefully we'll, uh, be able to get a little more interaction from the crowds. These, some of these, a lot of these Fridays have been completely dead until tonight when we just decided to fucking kill it. And, uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll, really we'll, we'll, um, uh, so, Kaba, where, uh, where are you at, man? If people want to, I mean, anybody who listens to any of your stories, they're going to want to follow you. But, I mean, wait, really, I mean, I don't really do a lot of the, um, uh, I, I, I'm on, I'm on Twitter at, uh, I think it's Cabo Wabo 79, Cabo underscore Wabo 79 on Twitter. Yeah. But I, Man, I, I honestly, I, I have a, like, I, I would love to get into podcasting. I just, man, I don't know. I, I do too much stuff, man. Yeah, you need to stop having a life. Yeah. Yeah, quit that having a life bullshit. Dude, it's amazing having a life now, especially with, with, with Marley. Man, we, we always find something to go do. No. Lame. It's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. We, I think we said last week that uh, once you stop having a life, like you get too old, you can't do anything anymore. You're you're just a, a amazing podcaster waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can be broke like me, like physically just broken, like you didn't tore your body to shit, or you can just be lame like Kent. Uh, but I don't think I could. Like you guys do a great job. Like, I love watching you guys. So, like, you guys still, even though what episode was that with Sonic the Brain Dog? Uh, <laughs> even it was like even though episodes. Kent was, like, nine sheets past the wind, like, not even into it. He was past it. Like, past it. Like, just go. Yeah. You guys still <laughs> kept it together and, and made it through the podcast. And I was just—I mean, you guys do an amazing job. I, I, That's—I would strive to keep your guys' level. It's—it's it's muscle memory at this point. It's been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know about that. Like, I—I I, I still can't get the damn intro right. So, uh, so Kent, where can people find you, man? Like, uh, you know, you, you drink beers and shit. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. If you want to know about the beers that I've been drinking, which I did go and rate the one that I tried on air last week. You can go to ratebeer.com, look up username Del Noche, you can read all about that. But if you want to follow me day to day and see the crazy shit that I say on the internet, go to Twitter and follow me at RM underscore Del Noche. So, uh, so I took the opposite approach and completely forgot the name and forgot to get the name of the delicious beer I was drinking last week. So fuck it. Um, but you can find out more of that and uh, other wonderful things that I say that I should probably regret. On whole, uh, at Ethan Kane on Twitter, and uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun on there. Pretty much uh, every five minutes when I'm at work, because why the fuck not? So, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, for for the record, uh, I'll let you remember for the evening, uh, delicious. So, um, yeah, I'm drinking. Uh, this is a local brew, right just oh, right up the road. Fair Fair Hope. It's at Amber. Uh, it's actually pretty good. I actually re- actually really like it. It's a Florida Panhandle local. Actually, lower. Well, yeah, Florida Panhandle, lower Alabama. They, we call it LA over here. Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good times. Good times. Um, hey, we did we we did forget to mention that uh, you can cruise on over to Geek and Gamer Gear dot com. Geek N Gamer Gear dot com. And yep. uh, use the code Ritual Misery at checkout. Uh, get the, uh, get the, 10% off your first order and 
help us out a little bit by letting us get out there a little bit. Um, other than that, yeah. and um, hopefully Tay Allen next week It'll be our last Friday. Yep. It's gonna have to be a little bit of a party. Yep, and and here. Here's the thing, too. We are rapidly spiraling down to our 100th episode. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, uh, in this way. <laughs> yeah. Well, 91 through 99, I think, is going to be much, much better. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're going to get some, some amazing guests on. We're going to start ramping up and hopefully culminating in an absolutely amazing episode 100. Uh, details come on what, what that might be. Details. Uh, it's gonna, gonna be great. It's gonna be great. As soon as I email some people and see if they'll come on the show, that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. You know, the, there's that, that. That's a minor detail. That's a minor detail. So our guest services <laughs> department is yeah. still in beta as well. <laughs> as um, the city department. Um, uh. You can follow Chip <laughs> at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas on our subreddit ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. Call and leave his voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Uh, and, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For me, for Kent, for Cabo, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my god. That was a that was a show. That was amazing. <laughs> is, is there like any possible way for me to just like shove this beer bottle right in my fucking eye? Like I um I I guess like we hit we've hit beta before, but there's never been a time during a show when I've literally just turned my mic off and fucked around for fucking fifteen minutes. There's never been a show, a live show, where I stood up and walked away from <laughs> for ten minutes. Oh my god, uh, that happened. I feel like um, this was a very high caliber show. We have. <laughs> With this finished. show at episode 90, I think you have finally set the bar. <laughs> for, for beta shows? <laughs> for oh beta God. shows? <laughs> that as long as you can get above this bar, this, you're good. This, it's a good show. Beta starts here. <laughs> yeah, like, yes. <laughs> you this officially is- started beta. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, man. Oh, my gosh, man. Oh, lot of viewers. Thank you for being with us. Yes. Hey, chat. You guys, the chat is awesome. I can't believe they stuck around. Man, when, when 30 minutes of your one hour show is literally troubleshooting the audio problems that you don't know you're having, <laughs> it's, it's all Amos. It's all, and all they got is Amos. They see us talking. Yes. And just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's the crazy thing. Like, we knew that we were having audio issues. Mainly, Amos's audio was shit. We fix it, go live, and Amos is the only audio that yeah. can be heard. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this is holy shit.